In this video, I'm going to focus on the basics of interviewing specifically. Um, this is maybe the scariest part of doing field work. I know it was for me when I was getting started. Um, talking isn't always easy, right? So um, we'll kind of go down my bullet pointed um, list of things to keep in mind. But the most important thing to remember is that um, even though this is a formal interview situation, at least a relatively formal interview situation, I want you to keep it conversational. Um, there's no reason to make this any harder than just sitting down and having a kind of natural conversation with someone. We are not journalists. We're not, um, we're not cops. Um, we're there to learn. Um, and if we don't provide lots of opportunities for the other person to talk and share things and shape the interview itself, um, then we are, we're kind of defeating the purpose of ethnographic documentation. So um, I think the first question that comes to everyone's mind is what on earth do I actually ask these people? What are you looking for? Um, how am I going to be graded, etc. So like I said, keep in mind, conversational. Um, I do not have a hard and fast list of questions that you need to be asking anyone. I want you to shape this experience too. So um, I'm going to recommend that you create a short list of questions that um, focus on the things that you want to tackle. But beyond that, do not write down any more questions. Um, this should be a back and forth kind of thing, and you will be required to think on your feet a little bit. If you know that you're going to struggle with making the conversation flow, um, maybe spend some time the night before researching the person, researching what it is that they do, and jotting down themes. Go through the relevant sources that we've gone over in class or ask me for more um, if you don't feel like those are cutting it, and just think about themes. Write down a list of themes, not questions, right? If you write down a list of questions, you are going to end up guiding that conversation and um, it'll become really stiff and uncomfortable. Um, and I'm, I'm speaking very much from experience. I used to write down lists of questions because I was terrified um, about what might happen um, when going into a stranger's home or their workshop or whatever. And, um, you know, when I was forced to sit there across from them for a given period of time, what if they didn't want to talk to me, right? I, I had to think of something to say, um, but I pretty quickly figured out that those questions just made my life harder. Um, and quite often um, resulted in a shorter, less fun interview. So when you're thinking about what kind of themes to talk about, um, go back to those readings, right? So we've talked a lot about conservatism and dynamism, Tolkien's twin laws, right? We had to, um, lots of you talked about it on the midterm. Um, and I now realize it was actually required on the midterm, so everyone write, wrote something. Um, if you don't remember that, go back to um, our slideshows and review what the twin laws are. But those concepts will really guide, um, or they should guide, much of your conversation. So um, conservatism and dynamism, right? Think about the transmission of the thing that you're researching. How did that person learn their skill set? That's probably question number one. How did you learn to do whatever it is that you do? Um, next, you might talk about how their um, skills or whatever it is that they do um, is traditional. How was it similar to the old school thing that was happening way back when? Or how is it similar to what they learned from their mentor? That naturally kind of leads to, well, how is it different? How they changed their skills over time and um, created their own kind of aesthetic or um, kind of creative approach to whatever it is that they do. You can also ask, um, how did you build on your skills? Did they have other mentors? Are they mostly self-taught? That kind of thing. How have they changed over time? Um, and spend some time talking about aesthetic. Um, even if it's someone making a pie or cooking or doing something occupational. Um, 
that's going to be a little bit harder to tackle because those people um, probably aren't thinking about whatever it is that they do um, in an artistic kind of way. But as we've talked about in class, there's still an aesthetic, right? So you can make a pretty pie or you can, um, I don't know, uh, when I think about the aesthetics of occupational folklore, um, I remember um, in grad school talking about um, tobacco a lot, creating a pretty pile of tobacco when you're picking it. But there are lots of different examples. Obviously, that's a terrible example in Rochester, New York. But um, there are lots of examples there. So think about how the thing they do looks, how it smells, how it feels, that kind of thing. Again, read through the relevant sources, and that will hopefully kind of help you think about big themes. And if you're really struggling, get in touch with me. Um, if I know that your topic has changed or whatever, um, drop in on office hours and we can talk about how to kind of strategically approach doing that interview. The most helpful thing that a professor ever taught me when I was learning how to do an interview, and I've shared this with a couple of you, um, is to allow for silence, which sounds counterintuitive and can be really scary. But um, if you are sitting there and you're talking to someone and it gets awkward, and you're just waiting for them to say something. If you keep waiting, eventually they'll say something, right? Um, be stubborn, play them a little bit, um, you know, make it awkward, lean into it. Um, if they have to say something, they are going to volunteer information that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten out of them by asking them a question. So you can play with that in lots of different ways. Um, and hopefully, with any luck, you'll have some kind of rapport with the person that you're talking to. Um, so <laughs> even if there is awkward silence, um, you know, it, it's not totally awkward. Um, and when you're wrapping up your interview, you should always conclude by asking, is there anything else you want to share with me? That provides another opportunity for them to volunteer information. You can ask them if they have a story to tell or... Um, you know, if there's any more information that they'd like to share, um, any helpful hints. You can also ask for other contacts. Sometimes that could be helpful. Um, at some point during the interview, you can do this at either the beginning or the end. Um, the beginning is helpful, but the end works too. Go ahead and either introduce or just state the name of the person that you're interviewing, um, where you are, who you are, what the date is, that kind of thing, um, and what you're talking about. Um, thematically. That'll help anyone who's listening to that uh, recording in the future identify what the hell's going on without listening to the whole recording, right? So try to squeeze it in somewhere. It can be quite awkward, but um, you know, it's, it's better to squeeze it in than to forget it altogether. Um, which leads me to a couple of other things. Um, We'll talk about how to do the release form in another video. We'll do a paperwork video, um, which I hope isn't as dry as it sounds. Um, do the release form immediately after the interview, after you know what you've talked about. That'll make sense after you watch the release form video. Um, next up, we're going to do, um, I'm doing a video about the tech stuff, how to actually record these interactions. Um, whether you're doing them in person or online. So stay tuned.